It's Dave from Hooked on Headwaters. I'm joined today by Dan and Jerry. As always, these are our expert captains, the guys that will put you on the fish, the guys that are local and know these lakes in and out. Do you notice one of us is missing today? That's my man Barry. He is home. He's uh, not feeling that well, so he couldn't join us. But hey, Barry, hope you feel better real soon, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, we had a really interesting week here in the, the Headwaters area um, on the lake. It was the week between Christmas and New Year's and it was just the crazy mm -hmm. and that walking a lot. Oh yeah. Uh, I guess everybody and their mother came down. <laughs> nuts. <laughs> Those nuts. Cars all over the place, um, parked every which way. Really interesting. Maybe some, some of you are not aware of it. There is a overflow parking directly across the road there uh, by the Headwaters Lake parking lot. So there's plenty of room there, yet people were jammed <laughs> into every nook and cranny. Couldn't even get the bathroom door open. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Serious. It was, it was a crazy week. So, uh, and there's like 10 acres across the road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wide open folks. Plenty, you don't have to worry if you can drive in, forward, backwards, <laughs> So keep that in mind. Maybe some of you weren't unaware, were unaware of it, but um, mm -hmm. um, pl it, there is plenty of parking. Um, so we want to talk about to these guys about their week. They're going to share about their, they're going to give us a fishing report, the lake report. So let's start with Jerry. All righty. Oh, uh, where do I start? This week, I, let's see, I started in, I started in Headwaters on Monday. Um, I had three boys. I had Jimbo, Mike, and Vance. Uh, we did really well. We were in the back corner, back southwest corner. We did, um, I think, five dozen shiners in about four hours. Biggest fish that day was 9-2. Um, we got a picture of that fish, got that fish on scale. Nine pounds, two ounces, guys. Wow. Legit monster. Hold her up, Jim. <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> you ain't got nothing on this two pounder. Hold her up, Jimbo. <laughs> Look at that fish, guys. Wow, that is something. Um. So we did really well that day. Uh, Tuesday, I was back in Headwaters with uh, Andy, Alex, and Gus, three boys, came out. Their dad dropped them off to me and let me have them for the day. Um, we did really well that day as well. We probably ended up with about 30 or 40 fish. A little bit different that day. The wind started out coming out of the northeast, and really it ended up coming more out of the south before the day was over. It completely flipped on us. Um, the lake was one way half of the day, and then it completely changed and hmm. all of the stuff that we were fishing went to the far end of the place we were fishing. Hmm. So, I mean, it just completely changed, but still we did really well. Um, fished again yesterday with Jimmy and Guy. Now these, these two guys are from Ohio. They have fished with me four times now since Christmas. Hmm. We actually fished Satori's yesterday. We took the airboat and we went up to Satori's and we, we caught a lot of fish. We probably caught 30, 40 fish yesterday. Biggest one was about six and a half pounds, but we caught a lot of fish up there. Um, did a little airboat excursion, rode around, looked at some alligators. Um, just, man, it was just a good time. A little bit something different, got out of headwaters, went somewhere else, did a little something different. And actually, I've had them guys in five bodies of water now. I've had them in Farm 13, Headwaters, Garcia's, Kennensville, and Satori's, and they have caught fish in all five bodies of water. And, and for those of you who don't know, these are really the five bodies of water Jerry just mentioned. They're the headwaters to the St. John River. Mm -hmm. So St. John River is one of the few rivers that flows in this, it's not the only river. But, uh, I think uh, it's one of two or three in the United that States. That flows north. <coughs> Yep. And mm -hmm. the, the headwaters are where it all starts is right here. That's right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Runs all the way to Jacksonville. Yep. 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 So that was uh, that was pretty much the week. Um, 
went today and had new tires put on my truck. <laughs> so I so I took some t I took a little bit of time off today, and uh, we'll be right back at it tomorrow probably. All the money you but, made is now on your truck. Yeah, all the money the I tire. made is now on the, front, on the front and the back of my truck. <laughs> That's happened to me not long ago. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a good week, man. The fish are there. I mean, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing right now. Um, it's good, man. It's a good time of year, man. We're having fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about um? No, it's, so it's it's uh, early January. As far as the spawn, any, any they are any on. Sign? So I was yes, I was in Knights last week, Kennensville. I call it Knights because I'm from here, and it actually is a cow pasture that Knights Ranch owned mm -hmm. for many many years. So the locals around here we call it Knights, but um, it is in the town of Kennensville, so it is known as Kennensville Lake. Mm -hmm. um, I was in there last week and a lot of the vegetation, the hysons, the, the, you know, the water cabbage, all of that stuff last year that was there, it's been sprayed pretty heavy and it's gone so you can now see the shoreline and we were going down through there around 25 mile an hour with the airboat and I mean everywhere you looked were buck bass on beds and the females were just all around them, in and out. So I had some customers in there that were from... West Virginia and South Carolina, they were friends. They lived 13 hours apart, but they were friends and they fished in there with me. They did bring their own boat and the next day they went in there with Cinco's with no weights and caught some big fish, some really big fish. Just throwing that shoreline, working in beds, anywhere they saw dark places, they threw and they did, they and caught. I, I have pictures though, right? Yes, you have. So I'll be showing the I don't the pictures. know if you have pictures of yeah. that day, okay. but I have them. <laughs> we'll put them on there. <laughs> but you do have some pictures from some fish, from some fish this week. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, this doesn't mean that the spawn is happening now and it's right. over like up north, you know. From what I understand, you guys way up north, your spawn is a small window. Again, Florida, we can get, I've seen fish on beds in March. It we, just depends on the weather. We caught a fish last week that was 11 pounds, 14 ounces. Hey. And then two nights later, we caught one that was 11 pounds within 300 yards of where we caught the first one both of those fish are full but they are not full full and mm -hmm. then we've caught some others that are seven eight pounds that still have probably a month to go yeah so they're they're where they're supposed to be and they're doing what they're supposed to do but by no means are they anywhere near done i mean these fish are going to go all the way up into march yeah, yeah they're getting just now getting fired they're up. just now you getting know, fired up long man. ones you see right they're long and yeah long and well, then you they'll do. feed you up and yep. start yeah. getting those bellies absolutely yep yeah. yeah. so but yeah this is uh this is the time to come get a big fish if that's what you're looking for mm -hmm. awesome i want to uh mention the davis house in they are one of our um, channel supporters and uh, we thank them you guys should check them out they are a uh, nice great great place to stay if you're in this area they're right on the indian river in sebastian florida mm -hmm. um, just down the street from multiple restaurants some really really nice eateries down there crab stop great, great place for to walk along the river ride your bike um he, they can accommodate your book your boats yep. they have water and electric so davis house in you make make sure you check them out and if you mention Hook on Headwaters, you get a discount. So, cool place to stay. We highly recommend it. Yeah, I drove by there yesterday. There was a guy with a nice Triton parked there. Yeah. I had to go look at the river because it was absolutely gorgeous yesterday. I was like, man, I need to be fishing out yeah, on the river today. It just, it just <laughs> happens. I was there. I was there yesterday afternoon catching up with Kyle. And I had my kayak out. I went out. I put some flounder. Can't give you the spot. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> you don't have any flounder. <laughs> Lots of lots of um, uh, dolphins for whatever reason yesterday afternoon late day about this time dolphin were all over the place um sadly we've lost a lot of manatees in this area over a thousand in the last year or so yeah um but um there you, you do see uh, you do see them once in a while you catching those on shrimp i can't i, I can't tell you <laughs> i had to do don't it don't say a <laughs> word to do it <laughs> Uh, this guy right, water. this guy right here, boy. You so ain't, he's say. not gonna tell you nothing. I, I knew, I already knew the answer. I just had to do it. <laughs> so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's now a season on flounder. There is a season, and on it started flounder. what this the last year or this year? This year. Okay, this year. first time ever that I know of yep. that we have a season on flounder. So you guys that normally come out to fish, 
Check yeah. the regs because they change a lot, just right. like not keep headwaters has changed. This yet. is the time to catch them, though. They love that cold water, that cold yep. weather. This is it. Water gets mm -hmm. clear. It's a good time to gig them, bow hunt them, anything yep. like it's that. Yes. Find, man, they're along those drops. Find yep. them drops, them sandy, especially the sandy drops. Let me Boom. write this down here. Boom. Get my pad out. Max, <laughs> the hats. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Dan. Yes. What's up with regulations? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so some of you have probably heard on social media that there are going to be changes at headwaters. I don't know exactly the date yet. As far as I know, the regulations yeah. have not changed. Check on myfwc.com for the latest regulations, but they are going to be requiring uh, circle hooks for live bait, anything over three inches, I believe. That's it. And. Uh, it's going to end up being catch and release only on largemouth bass. You'll still be able to keep your crappie, uh, catfish, that kind of stuff, but it'll be a catch and release fishery uh, in the very near future. So yeah. check the regs before you go. Um, there are other places around. If, if you do like to eat bass, there are a few lakes that are still uh, you can harvest out of there. Um, and again, there's, good, there's plenty of crappie to be caught as well. So, And I'll post a link to the FW um, C, um, um, regulation or rule on the new, the new, um, mm -hmm. the new requirement. Yeah. Don't By the way, that that circle hook requirement uh, is also in effect for saltwater. Oh, really? I wasn't aware of that either. Or live bait. Yep. Yeah. Here in Florida, the regulations change regularly. Yeah. So, <laughs> so same way with manatee zones. If I've been out there in the manatee zones, I go one time. I go back, the sign's been replaced in exactly the opposite. So <laughs> mind the signs, check at the boat, most boat ramps, it's labeled. Uh, we don't have any manatees in fresh water here, but yeah. the salt the water stuff. is a good thing though. I mean, I've been using them forever. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. So we had a question this week came up regarding circle hooks. So um, the question was what size circle hook were, what would we recommend? So I, uh, by the way, the, my response came from Dan. My <laughs> so Dan, yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I definitely want Jerry's two cents on this because he doesn't. He's yeah. like the shiner dude. Um, wh for me, you look at each brand; they they have different styles. So you have different brands, and they all have different styles of circle hooks, different gauge wire that they make the hooks with, different way they bend it. Uh, so it really depends on the size of yeah. bait. Yeah. Um, typically a four to six aught, depending on the brand, don't hold me to it because they're all different. Um, I've been fishing with some five aughts lately, I've, I've got some Eagle Claw, I've got Gamakatsu, That's it. Uh, some owners, things like that. Uh, so look at, you know, most of your shiners are going to be six to, well it depends on, depends on what you get. Sometimes you'll have a ten inch shiner, big baits, so you need to have a variety of hooks when you come here. Um, if not, stop in here at Stick Marsh Bait and Tackle. They should have some hooks that'll work for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, what's your two cents on that? Well, you know, like, like Dan was just saying, when you buy these large wild shiners, you know, one can be three inches, one can be five inches, one can be seven inches. I mean, you're not going to get, you know, but the majority of them are five, six inches long. Yeah. Um, now, with me being a shiner guy like I am, I have a box that's got. From the time I started doing this years ago until now, I've got 17 different kind of hooks I've tried. Mm -hmm. The hook that I'm using right now. <laughs> what's up, little? What's up, little man? <laughs> hey, it's a working bait shop, folks. That's right. What can I tell you? We're busy up here. We're busy up here. <laughs> right now, I'm using I'm using a I'm using a mustad, and it's actually a three aught. It's a lot smaller hook than I've been using. Um, like Dan was saying, I have used fours and fives in the bat in the past. Gamagatsu's is a really good hook. They actually make a hook that just on the packet it says shiner hook. Mm. I mean, it is strictly for shiner fishing. Mm -hmm. um, but right now I'm using a three aughts, um, a mustad, um, and the reason I've, I have chosen that hook is is because. A lot of my customers don't like to, they just don't want to jerk. They don't want to really set a hook. And this is the hook that I have found that is best suited for their best success in a hookup rate. I mean, you just basically sweep that thing and I mean, the fish is hooked. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you've got, it's all preference, but three to four, five, hot, five-aught, Mustad, Owner, Gamagatsu, they're all good hooks. 
they're all heavy gauged hooks, heavy steel. You ain't got to worry about them bending or straightening a hook out. There's no bass going to straighten that kind of hook out. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, that's that's about where it's at. I mean, you just, it's all in your preference. Try them. Try one. If you don't like it, try another one until you get, you know, what's what's good for you. Okay. Yeah. So what I'll do too is I, I'll fish, uh, a lot of times I'll, I'll use a certain size, I'll have a certain size hook on and I'll, you know, best foot forward. I'd, fish my big baits and then what I'll do is a lot of times I'll, I'll downsize my hook when the hook is just too big or if my hook is just too small and I have a few big ones left I'll just I'll cut off and retie a different and that's size that's true hook. because a lot of times you know depending on what these bass are doing and depending on where you're at let's say you're in uh, we've covered this before let's say you're in four foot of water and that hydrilla is coming two and a half three feet off the bottom you know and you want to set that shiner and you want to hook that shiner through the back so that right. shiner can walk on top. Those bigger shiners, you can't get one of them small hooks to actually go through that shiner's back. So in a mm -hmm. case like that, you do want to have a, a little bit bigger of a hook, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. If you're going to hook them through, and everybody's different, some hook them top of the, I hook, I just do, I hook my shiners from the top down. Um, just about everybody else I know hook them from the bottom up. Yeah. So, but either way works, but if you're going to hook one through the back like that, and it's a seven, eight inch shiner, you know, you need a hook that's got a big enough gap on it that you can put that hook through that shiner's back and still be able to hook that fish. Yeah. 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 Yep. Good? Yeah, that's, that's good to me. All right. Awesome. Circle hooks. That's a good education right there. I want to take this time to thank our next sponsor, our new sponsor. Uh, well, they've been, well, they've been with us for a few weeks now. That's Blue Cypress Lakeside Cabins. So if you're looking for a more of a rustic setting, um, these guys have their cabins right along the banks of Blue Cypress Lake and a really, really neat place to stay. Um, I keep mentioning this, the, the back the back dock, the back um, porch is really cool. Look, looking out on the water, looking out the boat ramp, you can hang out, great place to hang out, have a few adult beverages, <laughs> put something on the steak. <laughs> and uh, we another place we recommend you will enjoy your stay here they will take care of you and, and they're very very accommodating you you just mentioned that someone caught a uh, rather so large i was I was, <coughs> I was talking to a gentleman just the other night um i, I grew up here obviously yep. all my life this this young man he's late 20s he grew up here uh, i've known him since he was a little boy he fished a tournament this weekend in Blue Cypress, and five fish. He, he won the. He obviously won the weight. He had a, a nine pound eight ounce, big big sow. Uh, caught it mm -hmm. flipping the grass on a cinco. About that. Yeah, beautiful fish. I saw the picture of a beautiful fish. And that's to get a bag of fish like that on Blue Cypress. It's tough. It's not yeah, an it easy lake to, to master. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's different than everything else we have in Florida, really. Yes. And the fish, the fish, in my opinion, they. I haven't really figured them out. I want to turn them out there a few, couple, three years ago. We had like 20 pounds and change, and our big fish was only like six something. But uh, the fish, they're different. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's you know, I, I don't know if maybe the fish move in and out, or if they just move further back into trees where you can't get, you know. And well, so it's just it's well, it's just the, the lake habitat's is, different there. Yeah, much you different. Know, it's it's for one, it's a very shallow lake. Mm -hmm. um, so be careful on it because it gets extremely rough when the wind gets mm -hmm. up. But it's it has a lot of sand bottom in it. Um, it has a lot of grass, old swaying grass. I don't even no, know what kind of grass. Kissimmee grass. Kissimmee grass. So yeah. it has a lot of swaying grass in it. It doesn't have any hydrilla in it at all. Yeah. Right. It's all emergent vegetation, That's no exactly submerged right. vegetation. So it's, it's a different setting and those fish that live in that lake have adapted to that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it, it, it's got some big fish still hit in it. I mean, oh, yeah. 30 years ago, it was something else. Um, yeah. But it, it does still have some big fish in it. And um, if you can figure them out, they're there to be called. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're a kayaker, it's one beautiful lake to kayak. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you're, you're in and out of those cypress trees. So those cypress trees are 50 feet from shoreline some point, 30 feet from the shoreline. And so you've got water between the tree. Well, so and it's... And, and the then the yeah coastline there yeah there's, well there's, there's a lot of the lake I've never seen the shoreline I've yeah. only seen a very small portion of the actual shoreline in Blue Cypress because it is marsh around most of it to the point to where 
you can get only so far and as far as you can actually see through the trees yeah you still can't see dry ground yeah. no yeah. no because that, cool. there's actually a creek that goes back blue cypress creek is called and it actually okay. goes back on the rollins ranch i mean you can go through mm -hmm. the cypress tree for miles and get back on that ranch but it is a and those trees are 200 years old yeah yeah i mean it's beautiful they're huge big huge cypress they got moss hanging off of them mm -hmm. and That's really i mean great. it's just it's old florida yeah, yeah. and what it's one of the mean? main nesting sites for osprey yes in the state is that right it sure beautiful is beautiful yeah. bird watching lake yeah yeah, yeah it is. bring your camera oh. especially kayak uh, your kayaker you're gonna yeah. get some mm -hmm. awesome awesome uh pictures mm -hmm. so for next we're going to cover a bait actually dan and i did a little fishing today and there was one bait that was uh, a little better than the others but uh let, dan's gonna cover so we caught a few fish today on the the old rattle trap old trusty yeah. rattle yeah. trap <laughs> a, a uh, lipless crankbait so i fish this a lot uh, several different ways actually uh you know i'm back from the days before braid driver really came out they had dacron back when i was a kid yeah. you i remember know? that yeah. you know that's, yeah. that was on the old trolling outfits you know for the yeah. offshore guys uh so i fished rattle traps i call it there's a lipless crankbait i just refer to it as a rattle trap like most of the guys do uh, so a rattle trap i for the most part I, I used to always fish it on mono these things are notorious not famous for but notorious for losing fish on yeah. right so i noticed that this was that actually belongs to dave i noticed you have some good quality hooks on this uh some of your uh, lipless crankbaits yeah you need to change out the hooks you you will get a better hookup ratio uh if, if your hooks are nice and shiny if, from the store they likely not to be the best quality <laughs> yeah these look like probably like, uh, like a triple grip or maybe a gamagatsu right. yeah. Uh, yeah. different treble hook they're stronger stronger faster better what's that yeah. whole deal yeah. But no, really, you really should change the hooks unless it comes with quality hooks on it, say like an owner Gamagatsu or something like that. Um, so you will lose less fish and get a better hookup ratio with changing your hooks. Now, as I said earlier, uh, I've always fished it years ago. I just threw it on strictly mono. Right. Uh, your rod selection makes a difference, like just like with your regular crankbaits. Uh, I like a softer rod. And now, you know, when I'm fishing braid, I like braid with a piece of fluorocarbon. Um, it's just like I like to do it. You can throw it straight braid if you want. But then I, uh, I started fishing braid with the rattle traps with a softer rod. Okay, um, well, you're not so, pulling it out of the fish's right. mouth when you set that hook. Right. I lose less. I, I tend to have fish were tearing off with too stiff of a rod. Right. And, you, and you tend to jump some off with a real stiff rod. So what i like about fishing with braid is i can rip that out the 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 bait out of the grass mm -hmm. uh, we caught some today doing that yeah. um, i had one where i just hit grass and i rip it i fish it very aggressively around the grass uh, and when it tears free of the grass Boom. that's a lot of times that's when you get a lot of your your strikes um, and also something i've noticed over the years too especially with customers that don't get to fish this bait very much is they'll cast and they'll feel the grass and they'll pull they'll pull the bait out of the grass so they're they're pulling and it, the, the grass tears from the bottom and they have this big ball of grass on the line so what i started doing is i actually i hit the grass i, I fish with my rod tip almost almost pointed like two or three degrees off Correct. and i'm burning it when i hit the grass i rip, rip it. it i snatch it real hard and that sharp action will tear the grass where it meets the bait mm -hmm. then you then you haven't ruined your cast and a lot of times that's when you get bit yeah. so what yeah. i've been fishing a lot at uh, headwaters lately is uh, a soft rod a softer rod it's still got a fast tip uh, kind of a medium action rod but with braid and i can uh, tear the bait out of the hydrilla much easier with me being a shiner fisherman if i had one bait if I have one bait that I could fish, and the one bait that I enjoy fishing, it's that right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of one of those baits on uh, on a really good day when they're just chewing a rattle trap. You can put a lot of fish in the boat. But it's also like today. It was 
almost bluebird Blue, skies, yeah, real mm -hmm. calm. Nice sun. And yeah. sometimes those days that rattle trap, you can absolutely smoke them yeah. on it. Yeah. So we saw, what was the two guys we saw in the kayaks? Yeah, what? guys from New Jersey. Yeah, Bob Matthew and, Matthew and uh, Help. Sean. Was it Sean? I don't even remember. I'm bad. Uh, I shouldn't have mentioned <laughs> the names. But, hey, guys. Uh, Matthew caught two nines yesterday. Yes, he uh, did. From the kayak. So you yeah. kayak guys. He did a little yeah. pedaling for that. And they were yeah. paddling. They didn't have trolling yeah. motors. Great guys, by the way. We talked to them. Well, we won the lake. We bumped into mm -hmm. them. And we just had a great conversation. But they were... Uh, they put in some distance, yeah. and this was a paddle, a pedal kayak. Not a trolling motor. They didn't have a trolling yep. motor, but um, good fishing guys. Hope to bump into yeah. you again. Oh, uh, something that Dave and I talked about today, uh, running in. Just a, a, a little bit of advice for you kayak guys, coming from a, a powerboat guy. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of you guys have trolling motors on your kayaks, which is I think is fantastic. Yeah. You can get where you're going. Uh, just remember in the S Canal. Uh, we don't want to swamp you guys. We want you guys to go fishing. But if you have your trolling motor on high and you're trying to get to the fishing spot, I can't. I don't buy you. Yeah, we can't. We have to plow <laughs> to get by you to get enough speed. Yeah. And now we're throwing a huge wake, and we don't want to do that. If you guys will just, if you see us coming, just stop. Uh, yeah, just we get up close to you. Just stop for a second. We'll idle by with no wake. And at least we will. I had, you know? a, guy, I had a guy the other day, and, and I told my customer, I said, I, I can't get around him. I can't get yeah. around him like that. Yeah. I'm going to have to gain. And I was like, it's going to swamp this guy. But yeah. he was just eight mile an hour, brother. He was blazing on. Oh, yeah. 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 But that, that's yeah, the just thing. Just slow it's... down. Let us get by you so we don't swamp you out. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. As, as, now, as a kayaker, if I'm in the Escanal, I'd rather you come, come <laughs> at me or behind me on plane. It's a, sm it's a much smaller wake. Don't stop up. Don't pull right back yes. when you approach me. That's just going to create a yeah. three foot yeah. wave. Yes. That's yeah. going to throw me over. Yeah. So now, I don't know what the, the rules are in the S Canal if you're supposed to idle by the guys. I would think just out of common yeah. courtesy and ethics, you would be yeah. slow down for yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, so that if what. White birth. Yeah, so uh, a lot of you guys are new to boating, uh, and we don't want to talk to you like you're a bunch of kids, but if right. you're new to boating, you're new to boating. Yeah. Okay? So. When you're plowing, that's when your bow's real high and your motor's, you know, you're you're throwing a lot of water out the back. Yep. The, your wake is really big, so you think you're doing the guy a favor by passing right. him, and you're going you slow down because you're a nice guy, but you're actually doing the worst thing you can to him because you're throwing the largest wake that that boat yeah. will make at that speed. <laughs> yeah. So either you pass a guy on a kayak at more of a dead idle or almost just above an idle, or stay on plane and run on by. Not, don't plow because it makes it difficult and you will swamp somebody like that yeah. for sure yeah. yep and with that said um that's barry said <laughs> with that said <coughs> hey barry um i will be uh putting out a video on kayak safety and setting up um uh, for new new kayakers new fishermen i'll be uh, hopefully next week um dave from yakin and bassin is going to join me so we hope to get that out uh, again uh, next week Mm -hmm. so hope that'll help a few people and that's that's not only for the kayakers it's good for the boaters to, to watch yeah we need to know well. what you guys do too exactly. and what's your what Absolutely. what makes your life yeah. difficult yeah. Absolutely. you know yeah i'll give you one thing if you're a kayaker you want to be seen man don't don't dress in camo. Don't dress a camo, camo hat, camo shirt, camo life vest. No, 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 no. Yeah. Brother, put a neon green light on top of your head and let it flash. We'll talk more about that next week. All right, I think that's going to wrap us up. I want to remind you that, uh, first of all, let me say that these two guys, they, they're just they're fabulous captains. Um, I, I, I have fish with both of them. They're born and raised here. They have fished these lakes all their lives. They're, they haven't come, they don't come from south, no way north. They are here. They know the lakes. They know how to get around. They know the conditions, how to handle different conditions. We highly, highly recommend them. Their information is below here. Their information is on our, our website, Hooked on Headwaters. Um, you can book through our website. You can book directly to them. All their information is quickly available. With Barry and I also have a bow fishing service. If you like to go bow fishing, something different. Maybe you go fishing with one of these guys one day, bow fish the next, bring your gal uh, or bring your buddy. It's a, it's a, 
uh, it's a unique outing, so maybe to make it a birthday gift or an anniversary gift. Mm -hmm. really, really something different and unique we and saw, very memorable. We saw a lot, I mean this, a lot of tilapia. Yeah, in, in yeah I've been seeing a lot yesterday. as well. This sounds yeah. Big boy tilapia. 10, out. 12 pounds. Yeah. I mean, and you can fish. keep tilapia at headwaters, and we want yes. you to kill those <laughs> yeah. tilapia. Well, yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and, and they're good eating. And you were telling me today they're they're delicious. So they, they are. We've had. I, well, you I, get them I, in a restaurant, I man. I mean, they're tilapia all the time from this yeah. lake. Absolutely yeah. delicious. At least I know where it came from. That water, especially south, where we typically catch um, tilapia, south part of the lake. That water clear. Is normally is clear. Tilapia tastes great. At least I know where it came from. Stuff you buy from the supermarket. Yeah, yeah. you buy yeah. stuff over from overseas. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've heard stories yeah. that we won't talk about on here. But you know, they sell it in the restaurant, man, and I mean, it's not cheap. I mean, it's a good fish. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's yeah. snow white meat. It, yeah, it's the same species of fish. It somehow has gotten uh, rampant uh, all over Florida. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of tilapia, and it's actually good. They grow really fast. It's good to go and, and uh, pull a lot of those fish out, out we there. We saw some yesterday that just look like torpedoes. I mean, yeah, they're just, I ones. mean, they're like yeah. that. Yeah, that's they're some huge. Big, that's some big boys. And part of the problem with them is, too, is they they'll spawn in the same areas that the bass do so they're they're actually taking up bottom that yep. our spawning bass could actually uh and you can't miss them big semi-tire beds that deep yeah yep. real deep bowl bed. you know what you're looking at when you see it mm -hmm. so if you want to experience that come get them in the talk. come get them give, fat, give the barry and i a call also check out our website new uh performance shirts small all the way up to 3x so we should be able to accommodate each and hey, every bro. one of you Another customer debate shop. <laughs> a busy place. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you taking the time to um, to sit down and uh, watch us. Watch us. Hopefully, <laughs> we give you uh, good information. When Barry and I started this channel way back in well, September, August of 2020, um, our goal and objective was to give you information um, that way when you came here to what has become the, the nation's best bass fishery you know you know how to get around um, mm -hmm. you know where to go where not to go we gave you some information how to navigate um, we talked a little bit about baits but that's what we're about it's about providing um, you guys information so you make make your day here most enjoyable ever um, we live for um, and for comments like this, uh, there was a, a dad that commented he had come down with his um, young son and uh, he mentioned that because of the videos that we put out, how to navigate the yeah. lake, he was able to get around and, and, get, and get on fish and his son caught his first real big bass and that's what it's about. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's not, we're not about catching 50, 50 bass and showing you that on video. We're about giving you information and we're gonna continue that. We're gonna grow the channel, bring even more content and provide, um, and, and be, we want we want to be the source for, for you to get information when you fish the Headwaters Lake and all the other lakes. Listen, I've been doing this a long time and it's not only my goal, man. This is my passion. This is what I do. This is who I am. This is who everybody knows me by. I mean, this is this is my this is my makeup. There is nothing that I would rather do than to take a boy or a girl from 10 years old, 12 years old, 14 years old, and let them catch not only a good fish but a a chance at a world class bass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can do this every day of the week by myself if I want to. Yep. The whole goal of this is to take people out and 20, 30 years from now, them still be talking about, hey, that fish I caught on that that's fish. Right. That's it. That's what this is about. And it's just not the kids too. Last it's week, everybody. I had a grandson and a grandfather caught their personal best. Yeah. And that's <laughs> I've had several guys, I'm sure you have too, where it's these, these older fellows that have been fishing a long time and they come yeah. down and they they catch you know a seven eight nine pounder it's the biggest bass they've ever caught in their life that's what this so. is about man i mean yeah, this it's is pretty cool we're pretty giving cool. people an opportunity here they come here they pay good money they come here from different states they save up all year long they plan this all year long mm -hmm. and when they come here i mean it's it's your job it's your responsibility to for them to catch a fish but i mean i want them to catch a fish that's that right. that's right you know 
50 years from now, 40 years from now, when I'm gone and this 12 year old caught this fish, he's telling his grandkids about that fish. Got to yeah. a lifetime. That's what mm -hmm. this is about for me. Yeah. That's, you know, that's something that I've, over the years that I've gotten, I really enjoy uh, people from different walks of life that come here. And I really it's like amazing. seeing the dads with their kids and grandfathers with the kids. That, that's really the fabric of our society. Yep. That's, yes. that's to me is something that really gets me uh, is the time that spent like the, the two guys we saw today Matt and I think Sean was the dad's so. name father and son they come from New Jersey, New Jersey. Yes. together father and son yeah. and his son wasn't a little he right. wasn't a, a young like kid grown so man. The, yeah. grown yeah. man and that's that's what we need as a nation is yes. is that a come bond together. Come with together. fathers and their children we yeah. ran, today we ran into a, a mother and son yeah mother and yeah. Son. yeah they're yeah. from uh, northern Indiana yes yeah. northern yep. Indiana down here fishing, they, rec they recognized us. Mm -hmm. Give him a hand with your thing. They, again, they 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 were familiar with the lake, but they've been watching the videos. Yeah, that's and, really cool. And they make they yeah. it was a great experience for them. They just, mm -hmm. she just had a thrill. Thing. And again, we're not talking. This is mo mother and son. We're not talking a, t a baby or teenager. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a grown man and his mom. Yeah, that's yeah. A yeah. Was, sure. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's, then, that's awesome. And then, you know, you take, like today or yesterday, I took out two guys. That's my fourth time. These guys are just clients now. These guys are, be friends. I'll be friends with these guys for the rest of my yeah. life. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's what we're about, folks. So. <laughs> cool. Well, thank that's you it. again. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please, please subscribe. Send us a comment, any questions, comments. You need information, where to stay, where to go, what to eat, what the heck. Send it all in. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we do it all. We do we'll it do all it here. All. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we're more than happy to provide you any and all information that we can. Yep. All righty? Yep. With that said, goodbye, everyone. See you God next bless. week. See you next week. See you on the water, guys.